Okay, and we are live. We are live. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is the first session of Paranormal Friction, and we are going to um, work out the characters and then, you know, the fun stuff like relationships and crap like that. Um, since And since Ethel has a picture of her character, we will start with her. Why don't you... Um, Tell us your, your character's name and give us some some ideas about her. Okay. Well, uh, obviously we haven't really discussed setting, and that's something we'll do as a group. So I'll give you her basics, but all the stuff that is setting specific, of course, I haven't done anything with yet. But that's Catherine Renardo, she's an ancient fox that serves an out-of-favor goddess um, that is very not very powerful anymore. Um, in her human form, Kit is a diminutive woman. Pale blonde eyes, gray, pale blonde hair, gray eyes. Um, she looks a little bit like the Arctic fox that is her true form. Um, she's crafty and mischievous, and she is bound by her goddess to be useful and do good in the world. But she, so she's in a little bit of conflict because her natural um, inclinations are to be very crafty. She's also bound to not let her true identity be widely discovered. So that. Um, again, is a conflict for her because she has all these flashy abilities, or at least some, but she also has to be very stealthy. Um, her romantic um, issue, so to speak, is that she has this powerful yearning for a human mate who is able to match her power and still be a tender companion, but of course she has this sort of secret identity. Um, I have... Um, a uh, kitsunebi t uh, ball, which they, is what they call it in Japanese, kitsune um, lore, but it's a pearl ring, and this pearl is um, where my soul resides and where most of my powers um, spring from. So if I'm separated it, from it for more than a day or two, I become weak and ill, and within a week I will perish. Is that the ring in the picture? Uh-huh. Um, I love candy mints. I'm afraid of dogs <laughs> because dogs know I'm a fox and they chase me and try and bite me. Um, what else can I say about Now, by, by candy mints, do you mean like York peppermint patties? York peppermint patties are pretty good, but what I really like are after-dinner mints, the butter ones. Those are really, Ooh, really no, delicious. Those, those are good ones, yeah. I have a weakness for those. Um, mm -hmm. My supernatural abilities, at least so far, although I think we kind of need to work this out of how we're going to approach it as a group, but I can create soul fire, which is typical um, from foxes, and I can willfully manifest um, in the dreams of others. And the other thing that is possible is that I can create illusions, but I don't know. We, we, we have to decide how powerful our characters are as a group, I think. Okay. John? All right. So um, have you ever seen a British TV show called The Snuff Box? No. No. Okay. Should it's a very have? odd, dark <laughs> sketch comedy with Matt Berry and Rich Fuller. And I saw this, this episode while I was sick and kind of highly misinterpreted based off of one scene, but came up with this really <laughs> And, and this, the basic story of this is that it's about two, um, two guys who are hangmen in, in modern-day Britain. Um, what, what I kind of wanted to do with my character... So there's this hangman back in, like, 1880s Britain who just got so entrenched in his job that he kind of stepped over without kind of fully dying. Um, but so, so he is kind of like a ghost. He is no longer alive and requires being attached to somebody to kind of manifest in the world. Um, he kind of has his attachment to dark powers, knows kind of dark things just by by being part of his job, you know, got a little too close to the veil. And so he requires being attached to somebody. So he kind of manifests in this alternate personality type way. You know, he doesn't actually, you know, stand next to this person who he's with, but you know, he kind of takes over somebody. Um, kind of this, that sleazy slash suave kind of character, you know, they get away with stuff because they're willing to just go ahead and do it as opposed to, you know, holding back all the norms of society that say, no, you shouldn't do this. Yeah, he kind of doesn't care. So 
I was thinking of his trouble aspect being reliant on you, where he has to be, in order to really, like, maintain control of somebody and do, do things in the world, whoever he's attached to, whoever he's kind of riding along with, has to be kind of very mild, very meek, kind of a loser. But that doesn't mean that, you know, that personality still takes over from time to time. So when he's fully in control, he, you know, oh, of course I can do that. Here we go. Yes, I'm willing to do whatever. But then he kind of switches to, and now I'm just going to flip back to this meek, mild, can't do anything, scared of everything type person because he doesn't have any, you know, ability to control that when that happens. Um... I didn't know, you know, I, I had another concept with if, you know, they were attached to, to one of the other characters where he is, you know, actually manifest in some way, but in order to physically affect the world to do things, it requires, you know, more effort, requires some source of magical energy, requires some sacrifice from the person he's attached to. Otherwise, he's just kind of attached to this person who, um, who, who he is connected to. And as far as, as looks and what they're like, um, if you've ever seen Matt Berry, who was on the IT crowd, this is kind of what he looks like. So, you know, he, he kind of has that kind of charming, but but kind of sleazy look. So I went to I went to college with a guy that looked almost exactly like that. <laughs> he he amazingly looks like a buddy of mine who goes by the nickname <laughs> Tin Man. And every time I watch anything that guy's in, I'm like, Tin Man, what are you? All right, that's Matt Berry. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Helen? Okay, so my uh, character's name is Hira Nadir, and she is a ghoul. Uh, she's a ghoul in the sense of kind of like a little bit based on Arab folklore. Um, she eats the dead. She can also eat the living, too, but the, her main need, her main drive is, uh, is the need to eat flesh. So a lot of her life is kind of based around trying to find ways to uh, to eat the dead inconspicuously so she does not get caught. Um, she, I guess that's her weakness too because when she is hungry she tends to get sloppier and more vicious. So despite her wanting to conceal who she is from people, particularly, you know, if she when she lives anywhere where there are a lot of people, she really wants to not have people notice her, but she's not as careful when she has that over-consuming need to eat. Um, she is a very petite woman. She has shoulder-length black hair, a um, bit of a tannish complexion. Um, she does desire companionship, but she finds it very hard to get close to anybody for a long period of time because of her uh, because of her secret and her need to feed on flesh. It does make it very difficult. Uh, she can shape shift into a dog like character, but it's not something that she it she only usually does it when necessary. Um, I would say she's kind of a sneaky sort of person because she has to be sneaky in order to uh, in order to be able to feed and continue living. Um, she like she also likes to run too. I'm not sure why, but part of it I think is to try to keep in some short sort of shape. She is a bit of a since she is a ghoul, she is somewhat undead, and she does wear heavy makeup that doesn't look unattractive, but it's a necessity in order to hide the fact that she does have an appearance which sometimes can seem a little bit uh, unnatural. Okay. Now that's an interesting spectrum of characters that we have. <laughs> yeah, it is. <coughs> oh, oh, and we have two ja uh, two Jeffs. <laughs> two Johns. There we have one John again. You must have you must have crashed. <laughs> um, it was no. the ultimate personality taking over. Yeah. <laughs> it was mirror mirror universe. Is that the real John or is that <laughs> Oh, John I killed Arthur. the good John Acadian years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I can write them down. Give me, um, give me each of your characters' names. Just the name. Uh, uh, start with Apple. Catherine, also known as Kit. Is that Catherine with a Y? No, it's Catherine with a K and it's spelled just normal. Why would it be good now? If I ask you if that's Catherine mm -hmm. with a Y, why would you say it's with a K? Well, because I figured you might be getting that wrong, too. It's um, <laughs> Catherine, not Catherine. 
Okay, I'm just checking. I know, I know, I'm just telling. Okay. Don't get testy. Okay, uh, John, what was your character's name? John Albert, who's actually named after two different hangmen. And then Helen, what was your character's name again? Uh, her first name is Hira, that's a H-I-R-A. And the uh, last name is N-A-D-I-R. Ah. That's pretty cool. I will pronounce that wrong at least 40% that's, of the time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we will worry about Jeff's character when he arrives. Okay. <coughs> now. John, you spelled my name wrong. How is it supposed to be? There's an E at the end. Is that... Yeah, because uh, as, as Ethel will attest, I'm terrible about remembering characters' names. I have a hard enough time remembering actual people names, so trying to remember the character names on top of it is usually uh, challenging. So, um, all right. Now comes the fun part, where we have to figure out how exactly your characters know one another. Now, we're going to assume that this is in some, you know, mythical, uh, probably, you know, mid, mid to larger size city. Nothing probably as big as, like, you know, New York or L.A., but something, I'm thinking more like Boston or Portland or, you know, something, although Boston is probably a lot bigger than Portland now that I just compared those two. But, you know, like a kind of a mid-sized city, big enough that it, you know, has a variety of, of crap you might need, but not so big that it's humongous. So, um, um, yes. uh, John and, and Helen's characters are pretty gothy. Um, <laughs> wondering if I should... Uh, goth yours up? Uh-huh, exactly. Goth my character up. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm more than willing. I mean, this is just, you know, thrown out there, so. I, I don't intend to play mine in a very, like, gothy, vampire worshipy type of way. Um, <laughs> just m more kind of a, like... Comic relief? Little bit. Um, sleazy comic relief, but who actually gets things done. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I, I don't will think be eating people. <laughs> <laughs> Just dead people. That works no matter where. You, well, if if possible, she'll eat dead people. We yeah, I mean, start a, we could start an assembly line though for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill them. You can eat them. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think I don't see my characters. I mean, she might be kind of gothy, but I don't know. I guess I kind of thought of her as being somebody who. Well, first of all, she would have to have some sort of professional job that would give her knowledge of where, you know, where to, where, find, dead where dead, yeah, where to find dead people. And I was like, well, I don't, I would see her almost as doing something in the medical profession. Yeah, I, um, she's a coroner. Yeah. That'd be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah, either that or e either like a doctor or a nurse in an IC unit, some place where she knows how people are going to be buried too. Because if she's going to go and get them, she has to make sure it's not going to be that difficult to do she's it. She's Quincy. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Medical exam. <coughs> You're in uh, it. They, they won't Medical exam. They, they won't mess a couple of fingers. <laughs> yeah, I just needed a snack, just some finger sandwiches. No, they were here when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> what about like an embalmer at a funeral home? Well, I wouldn't think she would want to eat bodies that were embalmed. I actually would think that, and I think it would. It a lot of funeral homes are family businesses, so I don't really see her as somebody who works at a funeral home. I could either see her doing like if she wasn't at, like at an ICU, I could see her being somebody who is even like a nurse in hospice care or like somebody at a retirement home. I mean, it does sound ghoulish, but she somebody who She's kind of cool. almost, uh, <laughs> she insinuates her way into their lives somehow by knowing these things and then kind of you know. No. Yeah, she I doesn't. Love it. Yeah, I don't see her as somebody who feeds nightly either. Just because in a mid-sized to big city, she could get caught. I see her as somebody who tries to preserve the bodies and probably 
has a very awkward social life and not many house guests because of that. But I don't and know. a chest freezer. That's what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <coughs> so so how how do you think your characters would would have uh, met one another? That's the tough question. Yeah, it is. So you were all in a tavern getting drunk, and... <laughs> well, since I'm the one who can um, sort of insinuate myself into people's dreams, somehow, I, I, I don't know where I'm going with that exactly, but... Um, well, and John, your character has... What, what, what are his interactions with other people other than uh, on a supernatural level? Well, so, so his kind of main motivations in life are to still continue enjoying himself. You know, he was definitely a drinker, a debaucher, you know, whatever pleasure of the day. Because living life as a hangman, you know, in the 1800s. Yeah. Oh, God, mm -hmm. this sucks. My life is dark. Here's the distraction. <laughs> And when he kind of, like, started realizing he was, you know, getting into the darker, darker stuff and slipping, you know, if you've seen Everywhere, that kind of, like, you just get forgotten by society, that's kind of what I see happening to him. He just got so dark internally, he just kind of slipped across, you know, with mm -hmm. the killing. So the, the whoever he's, you know, kind of inhabiting, um, you know, he definitely tries to go for people who have some guaranteed source of income, the idiot son of a banker who has a trust fund, you know, and then he continues to be like, I'm going to help you. You know, he probably makes deals like, I'm going to help you be better with what you want to be. Don't worry. Yes, here, this is how you talk to a person. Here's how you make friends. Here's how you get in business. No, no, you just let me take over. Okay, now. Then he goes on from there. Um, so I see a good hook here, and that is that your last inhabitee gets in like a car accident or something and Helen's character is like, yum. <laughs> and <laughs> I like that. Oh, oh take out. <laughs> like I'm just kind of hanging the around. The comes in the chin. <laughs> <laughs> and then so you're, you're escaping or, or something and you two somehow, I, I don't know quite what, but I, I can see how that could be. And uh, hijinks ensue. Yeah, well, hijinks ensue, yeah. Well, what I could see is, um, you know, incorporeal kind of sitting around going like, damn it all to hell, that was a good one, he had <laughs> 20000 a month. Exactly. And hair, and what? he had such nice hair. <laughs> he was even good looking too. Would you, would you please stop gnawing? Why? <laughs> no. I'm not quite out yet. I, I, let me get out before you finish that show. <laughs> I can't even die a good death. Avoid that head of tumor. <laughs> but I don't know where I come in. Like Little Miss um, Sneaky Little Fox. I don't know. Well, particularly since you, you, you specifically mentioned having a fear of dogs and one of the things that, that uh, Helen's character can do is turn into a dog. Yeah, I see that as a great foil for this story, though. Yeah. Because when she has to turn into a dog, I'm like, ah, take away. <laughs> I hate you. You hate me. Well, she could be the, you know, the, 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 um, the chicken hawk to your... Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah, that's an chicken? analogy that is. <laughs> <laughs> are we planning this to be the sort of thing where we're all acquainted and on friendly terms? Or well, you don't, have team? To, you don't have to necessarily... I don't think, you know, you have to necessarily be on, on, like, friendly terms, but, you know, it would probably help to at least, you know, know each other well, in yeah. some degree, because otherwise we'll spend all the time trying to figure out how the hell to get you guys together. And That's so basically, true. basically, we're trying to we're trying to take that step out at the beginning. You know, you're all roommates. <laughs> exactly. Hey, how the hell is that going to happen? Oh really? gosh. Hey, it worked for two different versions of being human. <laughs> well, another hook, um, because you said you could, Catherine can go into dreams. 
Um, yep. What if you, why would you go into dreams? What, what would your motivation be for that? Well, her motivation, I guess, and again, this is a little bit sketchy and we can make it whatever we want, but is really sort of a, 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 the typical superhero, you know, prevent evil in the world is where I was going with her. Well, one thing that, that could actually lead to the kind of hook, you know, um, between, you know, John Albert and here in the deer could be you see something weird, you sense something weird, and you slip into this person's dream and find somebody possessing them and boot me out. <laughs> and, and that could cause this guy to me, like, come on, I have to get back in, I have to get back in, pestering him, tormenting him, kills himself, gets in an accident. Well, shit, now what do I do? Hey, why are you eating this guy's body? <laughs> I need a new body. <laughs> You and I need one that won't get kicked out by this fox chick. <laughs> let's, let's go hunt down whoever kicked me out because I need to take care of that. And then you meet me and you're Please like, Please stop ah, eating my body. Can't kill the fox chick. Look, I'm currently between trust funds, but when I get it back... <laughs> oh, I get a cut. And see, that would play into my little craftiness too. Like, oh, I shouldn't let him do this, but, you know... <laughs> well, and you know, I mean, if your character is has been around for a while, um, which I would imagine that that she has, probably you know, a pseudo immortal type Absolutely. creature. Absolutely, she's um, she, yeah, she's probably you know gathered quite a bit of money that's holed away somewhere. So yeah, especially given her powers. So yeah, I sort of the here's a here's an idea. I just thought of this is that Kit, or Catherine, is, um, um, <laughs> sorry, is, I didn't see that, sorry, or I would have answered, but yes, yeah, <laughs> he's telling you the truth, you didn't just make that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> no, her name is actually Hermione. Um, <laughs> Granger? <laughs> yeah. Um, is that Kit is sort of this, um, did you ever see the movie Cat People? With Bowie? Yes. And, yeah. yeah. I've seen um, both of them. Right. That she's sort of that um, Mrs. Uh, oh shoot, now I can't remember their name, but yeah, she's this sort of um, uh, artistic type who has um, a, a sort of a benefactor of people, but in a sort of almost sinister or or at least surreptitious kind of way. So you're a female Malcolm McDowell, is what you're saying? A kind of yes. <laughs> Which is great. Well, a young oh, Malcolm actually, now McDowell. That you say it. <laughs> Older Malcolm McDowell is getting a little uh, odd, but oh, he was odd to begin with. He just used to be better looking, so it looks well, yeah. odd. Yeah, he has not aged well. There's nothing like good looks to keep you from seeming weird, <laughs> or for to make people not care. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that would work. Like I have the loft, right? The city loft, and and or 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 some sort of um, you know means of support that is somewhat invisible, but you guys are, um, when you find me, you're, it, 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 that's sort of a reason for us to stay together, is because I have means. Do you think I it's also possible, too, that maybe you have means and maybe you would own a building and that we would live in it? Would that be a possibility yeah, uh, somehow? Yes, I have like a loft, loft arrangement, you know, or... Yeah. Or, hmm. I'll take the penthouse, thank you. I'm happy being a parasite. <laughs> <laughs> You're you you are the supernatural Cato Kalen. But why do I want them around? That's the question. There has maybe, to be maybe maybe you're lonely. That yeah, that could be. I mean, I've been you know, hiding. I can't let anybody know I'm a fox. <clears throat> you know, it could it could be that it's been like you know hundreds of years since you've encountered another supernatural mm -hmm. being, and you know. Yep, I feel an affinity towards others who are not like... One of these kids is not like the others. Yeah. I would almost think that you would almost want to keep an eye on me, too, because I am by nature kind of evil, and even if I'm trying to keep my, you know, even if I'm just trying to eat the dead or something, it might be, if you're more good or more have an affinity for people, you might want to kind of keep an eye on me, too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And are you trying to be good? 
I mean, what's your motivation there where you're like, oh, I can't eat, I can't kill people and eat them, I must... I, I think I'm not entirely trying to be good. I'm trying to be careful. I'm kind of looking out for myself, and uh, I think it's more safe for me to do that. So I don't think I am entirely good. I think it's more like, you know, it's not easy to just kill and eat dead people. Or, you know, I mean, a ghoul <laughs> right, would... <laughs> without getting caught, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, yeah. Who's going to miss a club kid or two? Just, <laughs> if, just prey on hipsters, and nobody will even notice. <laughs> You'll have to watch them first, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. One of, one of the most fun games I ever saw was that uh, Venture Faction in, in World of Darkness made a homeless problem so that there were plenty of people to feed upon <laughs> who nobody would care if they went missing. <laughs> wow. I could see, um, be, because you're kind of cunning, and my character is definitely like, he'll do anything. You know, he will manipulate people, work people, do, do whatever he can to get his own ends. Maybe a little bit of mutual respect and keep my enemy close between, you know, Catherine and John Albert with, like, all right, I see where you're doing that. Uh-huh. But I'm not going to let you... Uh, let's be friends so we don't have to be enemies. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good for yeah. me that we're enemies. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, like I mean, just, just because... And this is, you know, just because you, you, you know, hang out doesn't necessarily mean that you're friends. You know, it right. could just it could just be, you know a convenient arrangement. Right. Right. <clears throat> um, something because um, you know, it's it's better that they that they're somewhere where you can see them rather than running out loose in in the world. Uh huh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to explain to someone while doing this about the Peter Davidson Vet television show. About the Peter Davidson vet TV show. Oh, all uh, all, things all creatures, small. all creatures great and small. Yeah, because I said I was going to name the bestiary creatures great and small, so I had to explain. <laughs> I couldn't uh, figure out why you were talking about all creatures great and small. <laughs> it just seemed time. It just <laughs> didn't make sense. I get it. Yeah. My buddy Walt was talking to him at Gen Con about stuff, and he's like, "He's my favorite doctor, but I don't want to go up with that because he hears it all, you know, all day long." So he went up and talked to him for like 15 minutes about Campion, which was the oh yeah, those I, I like those yeah. yeah. It was pretty much his uh, a British version of the Green Hornet, but you know without yeah. you know Bruce Lee or yeah. You know. <coughs> which really makes it oh, almost nothing like the Green Hornet if you don't have Bruce Lee. Right. <laughs> but it was private detective, you know, yeah. who helped him out. Drove around in a big old car. Okay, so we have a rough idea. Uh, we've got a rough idea of your characters. We have a rough idea of, of how you kind of know each other. <coughs> I guess what we should probably do next is is work on the the mechanics of your characters, if you haven't already. Have you have you guys worked out your, you know, what your. Um, and I don't know if you saw the the post I made earlier about the aspiration. Yeah. I yeah. Thought, I thought that was something that we'd have to do in game, though, because um, they kind of have to work for the setting, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, now that we have a better idea of the setting, mm -hmm. we can start implementing things like that. Anyway, so why don't we why don't we start uh, working on the you know the characters themselves? What do you see as being the um, the high concept and trouble for each of your characters. We'll start with Ethel. Ah! I feel like I'm John McLaughlin all of a sudden. Yeah, no. <laughs> Wrong! Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I loved that show when I was in college. Oh, I hated it. Oh, my God, it would come on and I would switch it off. They annoyed me so well, much. Well, it was, it was I, I, went to, I went to college outside of Chicago, so that was actually, our PBS was, was the one that aired the McLaughlin Report. And I don't know what it was about that show, but it was just this... It was it was it was like watching the circus because or mm -hmm. it, no it was like wrestling it was like the yeah. political <laughs> version of professional wrestling <laughs> because you knew that none of them really believed most of the crap that they were saying but you know it, it was just basically you were waiting to see who was going to pick up a chair first and start swinging 
And I always held out that it was going to be Kooky Roberts. It was going to be the one that was going to come out ahead in that fight. Yeah, she's pretty I tough knew one day, one day she was just going to have enough and smash a pitcher and start cutting people. She's going to do a <laughs> flying clothesline. <laughs> okay, uh, so. High concept. Um, uh, what's my deal? Well, so your I, high concept will, will revolve around your supernatural nature. So, you know, it could be, um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> you know... Um, well, I've pretty much already described it, haven't I, yeah. as far as what her... I mean, she's a kitsune. She's... Um, and she's sent here to be useful and sort of fight evil. <laughs> So, um, a fluent Kitsune benefactor? Well, I guess we could call her a benefactor, although... Well, yeah, I mean, but that, that wouldn't necessarily be... her as being someone who would, like, give money to good causes kind of thing. That's not really what I was after. Yeah. Although, that might be sort of her M.O. is that she's, like, the mysterious benefactor, but... Well, you know, you can give you can give money to good causes and do it for reasons that are selfish. Yes, well, indeed. So, you know, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have... I mean, and you can give money to, like, conflicting causes, too, if you're trying to... Yes, you that's know. called political contributions. That's yes. called a PAC. <laughs> <coughs> Kitsune <laughs> PAC. That's, <laughs> that's your character's high concept. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it should probably, I mean, you, the character's high concept should prob uh, aspect should probably say, you know, something about it, you know, her being a kitsune or being ancient or some combination thereof. She's an ancient kitsune superhero. <laughs> Do-gooder. Do-gooder. Well, no, not exactly. I mean, she does have this sort of... <clears throat> Oh dear, Chris is frozen. Conflict, conflicted nature. Well, that could be. That could also be part of her trouble. Yeah, that's definitely part of her trouble. All right. Well, choose somebody else. We'll come back to nailing that down a little. Bit. Okay. Then I guess we'll move on to John. So, so I was thinking, and I think it works. Uh, luckless bastard haunted by deceased hangman. Nice. See, that's what oh. yours should be like, Ethel. It should be I know. cool just like that. I know. I want it to be cool just like that, and, I, and, and I'm <laughs> jealous. Except for, you're not... You, who are you? Are you the luckless bastard, or are you the haunting hangman? Yeah, technically, yeah. Yeah, technically you are a haunting hangman, not a haunted by a hangman. Right. right. Haunting hangman. Hangman... Deceased hangman haunting luckless bastard. <laughs> yeah. But, and that's and kind of how I was thinking. Materially. Yeah, his trouble is kind of the, the luckless bastard slipping through, <laughs> you know, like, when he really needs to be that devious, cunning, do-anything, manages it, oh, look, and that's right when, you know... Yeah, Dude shows up, yeah. See, those are good. Yeah, I like, I like luckless bastard as, as your character's trouble. I think that would... Uh, I think that would be better suited than having it as part of the the high concept. Yeah. And that's something that'll be really easy to invoke. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be of service. <laughs> so did that give you a better idea, Apple? Yeah, keep going. I'm thinking. Okay. All right. Then I guess that means it's your turn, Helen, because you're the only one left with the character. Okay. Uh, well, I guess this is a lot of alliteration. Uh, ruthless, raven-haired, ravenous ghoul. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit too much alliteration. I don't know, but... Uh... Or just not enough. <laughs> Wait, no. Revenant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but revenants are, are more dead than a ghoul, so... Yeah. <laughs> and then it would sound like she was a hungry version of the crow. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> I'm so sad. I'm so. <laughs> Life is misery and pain. And where can I get a human head? 
12 in the morning. I'm so hungry. <laughs> and, and, so hungry. And, and eyeshadow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and eyeshadow. I, I, need, know, I, I need to go to the morgue, and I need to go to sex Mac. immediately. Max. <laughs> I, I need to hit the Mac counter on the way to the morgue. <laughs> <laughs> and so what do you see as, as being um, her trouble, Ellen? Uh, well, I'm trying to think of a succinct, like a more succinct way of saying it, but... I would say she gets hungry. She gets sloppy when she's hungry, in the sense that she is clumsy and like stupid when she's hungry. So I'm trying to think of a more succinct, uh, punchier way of saying that. Hunger that makes manners. me sloppy. <laughs> Can't think when hungry. Um, Can't something sleep. like Clouds that. Clouds will kill me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about just gets clumsy? No, but it isn't just clumsiness, is it? I mean, it's like... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't cover phrase. my tracks, too, and I just... It's the veil, the veil of humanity that I try to keep up so much, I guess. When I don't eat, it com starts coming off, so... Loses her shit when hungry. Yes, there you go. That's perfect. I mm -hmm. like that. There you go. Exactly. Great. Which means we're done, and we, we get to go back to Ethel now. Okay, well, there's my character, right? Ancient Kitsune Wanderer. Yes. And that's my... Not, that's not a bad... I mean, that's actually not a bad high concept. Right. I was trying to incorporate the concept and the trouble in one phrase, but I think that's just who I am. <coughs> right. And then she sort of has two troubles. One of them is that she is... Um, she's in conflict over, like, good and bad. I won't even say evil, because she's mischievous, mischievous and um, and crafty. She's fox, and yet she knows her her purpose in life is sort of to um, be a protector and a guardian and do good. And her little um, trickster ways trip her up, right? And then her other conflict is that she really wants um, a human mate, but She's can't um, well, you know, that could divulge be who she is to anyone. You know, that so. could be your character's aspiration. Yeah, that's perfect aspiration. Okay, I like it. And, you know, you could have your um, your trouble be, like, morally conflicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. It's more like her morals are in, in conflict with her personality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and you can, you know, you can use that for a number of different, um, you know, you can you can use that in a number of different ways because, you know, when you're when you're trying to do the right thing and and something goes wrong, or if you're trying to do the bad thing, and so. Okay, that works. That makes sense to me. Okay. Um, now, for the other two of you, since since we. Um, we have um, Ethel's uh, aspects all filled out. What do you see as the aspiration uh, for each of your characters? We'll start with John. Um, so, I mean, his general aspiration is to enjoy life. Um, but because he's not quite dead, you know, he, he, he never actually, like, died, died. You know, he kind of haunts like that. I was thinking, you know, possibly something where, like, a, a long-term goal type of thing of, Wait, is there an actual way back to being my own person? Um, oh, that's cool. can, I, can I live again? Can I live again? Yeah. And, you know, that, that even ties into I want to live again. You know, I want yeah. to live. I want to live life, <coughs> but I want to live again my own life. I, I like that. Okay. Helen, what do you see as, as uh, your character's... Um, Aspiration. I does, think. Does she, I say, is she? Does she want to to be something different than what she is, or does she just want a good source of of warm bodies? <laughs> Protein or, or yeah. Oh, I think she does like the idea of being human in, in a in a way. Like she, there there's a loneliness and a longing. I I think that she has. Dis despite this need of, of her hunger, I think she does want 
companionship, but she has a very hard time keeping the staying keeping human, I guess in a way. Not not keeping human, but uh sustaining feelings of warmth and love. She craves it and it's something that she tries to sustain, but in order to sustain it she has to feed. It's it, I guess it's like that her aspiration, though, is to uh, is is to feel ha the ha kind of happiness she used to feel when she was alive. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. So, note to um, NPC when she says, "You look good enough to eat." She means that literally. She means it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So the next step then will be to. Um, Work out your uh, your character's approaches. Um, now, what it, you know, it, the way it works out is you get one one approach at plus three, two approaches at plus two, two at plus one, and one at plus zero. Now, I can see. Obviously. Our kid soon is going to put probably her big one in clever. Yep, I've already done mine. Uh, what are your okay? So what are your approaches? Um, clever at three, quick and sneaky at two, um, flashy at one. So I, I I sort of struggled between flashy and quick because although she probably would have some flashy powers, she's also um, very dedicated to remaining um, right. not found out. So. Flashy at one, and careful at one, and forceful at zero. That seems reasonable. Yeah, I have mine figured out already too. What are yours? Um, I picked sneaky for my plus three. I picked sneaky actually, so sneaky at three because mm -hmm. I think that makes the most sense for my yeah. character. Uh, careful and clever at two. Um, quick and forceful at one. I mean, she does have some power when she eats as a you know as a ghoul, but, you know, brute strength is not her overwhelming power. And flashy at zero, because she doesn't want any, she's trying to keep, sometimes she tries to keep a low profile. John? Yeah, I, I have mine figured out. Um, I have currently sneaky at three, clever at two, flashy at two, uh, forceful at one, and quick at one with careful at zero. Um... But I was thinking about moving quick and careful because he is a little bit careful in at least that self-centered kind of way. You know, wait a minute, I realize I'm I'm stepping too much on somebody's toes. Time to pull back, you know, and go. Self-interest, yeah. Yeah, like wait a minute, I've gone over the line. Let me make it up just enough to get back in the good crisis. Right. That seems reasonable. And which one do you have at zero? Uh quick. Oh yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. So, basically, you're all a bunch of sneaky bastards. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um, Quick question. Yes. Forceful, is that more of like a physical force, a, you know, or like I mean, a, I'm going to push you, push you, push you until I get what I want? I think you can use it either way because okay. I mean it, it really just depends on how you're applying it. I mean you can you can be just as forceful physically as you can be you know with a personality. Right. You can be a pushy person and that can make that can be forceful as well. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other uh, questions or anything they need answered about how the character works? No. I have I questions guess. about um, the other characters. You guys no, have... you can't ask those. Yes, I can. Stop it. You can ask, but then they have to kill you. Do you guys have powers? Yeah. What are your powers? Um. Well, one thing is, I, you know, I, I can shape, I can shape shift, which is oh, that's one right. thing. You can shapeshift, yeah, huh? I can shape shift, and I gain more strength when I eat somebody. <laughs> uh. So it's like superhuman strength. Yeah, 
I yeah. mean, if I was trying to, one thing I was trying to figure out too, if I was going to go with um, with some of the things I've read about ghouls also, they do have, they don't have like a lot of influence over men, but they can kind of temporarily, a female ghoul can kind of temporarily charm a man, so there, I think there might be a little bit of that with her too, but I haven't quite figured that out mm-hmm. yet. My character kind of has that generic connection to, to the dark arts, you know, a um, little bit of knowledge of just like, here's dark magics, here's dark things. And because he is, you know, technically a ghost, because he has kind of stepped to the other side, a little bit of that like, yes, I can go walking through the spirit world and do some of that, but mm-hmm. I don't want to. That place is scary. <laughs> so make it worth my while. There's dead totally people wild. over there. Do you realize? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. <clears throat> and then, so, um, so what? What sort of powers does um, this kid have, Ethel? Well, the things that are appropriate for Kitsune, um, from the reading I've done and things I know, is of course to make soul fire. That's kind of a, a general thing. So I'm thinking that's sort of a spell um, where you can create light or you can create fire. I can like summon fire. Um, and the other thing that um, I think makes sense is this sort of ability to manifest in the dreams of others. Um, right. Some other things that I could take that are, would be congruent with my character would be the ability to become invisible or to create illusions. Um, well, this could both is another the same one thing. There. Yeah. I just I don't yeah, know how you... powerful we want to make our characters, I guess is what I'm saying. I mean... Or if my character should, by by definition, be a little bit more powerful because I'm sort of the um, the grand dame, you know, and I've been well, owning all three, my all powers. Well, all three of your stuff, characters so. are. For, I mean, how how old do you see um, your character as, uh, Helen? Because. My, my character, I see somewhere between the age. I don't see her as being older necessarily than a hundred, but I see her being older than I, I'd say like like ninety or a hundred, probably around. I'm but guessing. Does she look ninety or a hundred, or is she you know youthful? Appearance? No, she looks pretty youthful looking, just as long as she keeps eating. <laughs> and you know, it, it stays out of harsh light. Yes. So have you always been a ghoul? How does that work with ghouls? Do you, do you become um, a ghoul? Or? No, she became a ghoul, actually, through, uh, I mean, I usually I think the story is a lot of times it's through some sort of, like, sin or a life badly lived. Ah. So that's kind of it. I'm not exactly sure what she did, but she did something that wasn't so good and became a ghoul. Eating, uh, she didn't eat people before, but I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. think would uh no because your character if she's about a hundred or so yeah I, I was thinking like would, would it be interesting if if my character went alive hanged your character but it didn't take <laughs> it could work <laughs> but you know my character was eighteen eighties when when hangmen were more you know, England had hangmen not officially. You know, but but yeah, I don't know if that would work well. Too and well. Helen's character is probably more Middle Eastern or Mediterranean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I envisioned my character as. I envision my character as somebody who does have to move occasionally, particularly more now in the modern era where it's, you know, it's not as easy to just pick up travelers that are stranded in the desert and eat them. Right. So you know, that's obviously. <laughs> Some adjustments have had to have been made uh, to uh, go undetected. Huh. Do you work out? Want to come home? I've got a suit. <laughs> I've got a suit going. <laughs> <coughs> so where did, where did we where were we going with that? I forgot what the original question was. Oh, uh, about how powerful we should be. Yeah. Well, I know. That's what's so amazing that I immediately <laughs> forgot about how powerful we should be. So yeah, I think that and my things are. Yeah, well, and that, but that was sort of like, and so how long have we been uh, perfecting our art, sort of that kind of a thing? Yeah, so it would it probably be that your character is the oldest, and then John's, and then Helen's. I don't think I can fly. I think that's over the top, really. Not that all of it isn't, but I'll take that one out. <laughs> and then this sort of thing of being invisible or, or casting illusions, I think, is appropriate, though. 
Well, like I said, you could work that into the same thing because it can just be, you know, you can you can do. Yeah, illusions. my illusion is that I'm invisible. You can't yeah. see my my illusion is that you cannot see me. <laughs> Well, that could also tie into your ability to step into people's dreams of, like, a, a, you know, part of that was I can kind of step into your mind and make you feel this or see this. That's right. Yeah, it's sort of a mind control thing. Well, one of the one of the typical things with the powerful kitchen is um, driving people mad. How many tails does your character have? Nine. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. I know. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, I really love butternuts. <laughs> <laughs> that probably should have been your character's trouble right there. Loves butternuts. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> Definitely. Weakness for butternuts. If I figure that out in game, you are so screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what are these? Oh my, you were going to write me out to that cop. Pity there's a butterman over there. And another one farther beyond that. No, I'll switch. They're on the side of that door that only locks from the outside. <laughs> there's a buttermint factory down the road. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, what about stunts for your characters? Have you given thought to any stunts? I don't really get at the, the start, thing you exactly. probably really only need one or two. Stunts are just basically kind of, you know, special cases. Um, well, for how are they character. different than our powers? Because like, I can create soul fire, I can create illusions. So how well, is that not a stunt? Stunts, stunts tend to be more of a, like a special case directly to the rules rather than, you know, your, your powers. Like, give me a for instance. Well, there are, for instances, right there in the rules. I read them. I'm saying give me one that you would think would apply to me. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, actually, I would say that... Um, um, so one of them is creates fire, but, you know. Well, yeah, no, no, I mean, you're... I mean, because yeah, the, your your supernatural abilities are, are a different thing from the stunts. The right. um, <clears throat> um, I can see something like well, um, like one of the the sample stunts is the because I'm a smooth talker, I get a plus two when I sneakily create advantages when I'm in conversation with someone. Something like that for your character. I mean, you could I mean, you could have something, you know. Um, Say because I, um, because I'm a cunning fox, I get a plus two when I, um, 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 when I sneakily create advantages when I'm interacting with someone. Okay, that works. So, you know, that would, uh... Oh, and one of my... Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. But it's okay. Mind works. One of the, my big... Um, That's why you're a kid soon. One of my big um, not, troubles is that is that my soul resides in a pearl, right? Right. I mean, that's both an advantage and a disadvantage. And that, right. Because without my pearl, my powers are vastly diminished and I will eventually die. Um, you might actually want, hmm, <clears throat> that might be, um, you, that might be something you want to work into your trouble. Yeah, that's definitely, oh, you mean combine them? Or what do you mean? What did, what did we say was your trouble? That I have this yearning for a human mate? No, no, that's your aspiration. Oh, that's my aspiration. That's my trouble. Wait, i got to get back to my sheet. I'm morally conflicted. Yeah. Um, Actually, the thing about my soul residing in a pearl is probably a better trouble. The morally conflicted thing I, is okay, but it's not. It doesn't ring as true to me as. Okay. Yeah. My soul resides in a pearl ring. Uh huh. Now, what about you, John? Do you what do you think of first stunt for, or two for your character? 
Well, I, I was thinking of two. The first was uh, because I am a manipulative bastard, I can get people to do things for me. And I was, I, is that one of the once uh, session types? Um. No, I was thinking of that more as like a plus two because it's a sort of thing where like, hey, he would use that when I want you to go down to the store and pick this up for me because I'm feeling too lazy to do it myself. Or as a, hey, we're engaged in a sword fight and I'm a manipulative bastard so I can get you to think I'm over here, you know, de deal with my feints and parries. So, so create, like, create advantages? Right, I can create advantages with that. Okay. Which now? Which of your approaches would that be tied to? Um, probably to my sneaky approach. Um, okay. Once again, everyone in the party being sneaky bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I use my sneaky for good. Okay. <laughs> We're all playing rogues. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that when making this. I'm like, am I a rogue? Am I a thief? Or no, I... you're not. A, you're not a rogue because you're not attacking from the hallway. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I will not continuously stand in the hallway. Yeah, that's a thief. Thieves, thieves stay in the hallway. <laughs> um, Helen, what about your character? What do you see as a stunt or two for her? Well, see, I was also going to go to something that tied with my sneaky approach, too. So, I mean, since I am such a stealthy, sort of careful person, I feel like I could eavesdrop and spy without being undetected pretty easily. That is one thing that I can do. Um, I can see, I can, uh, what I could see is maybe um, getting a plus two and you sneakily overcome obstacles. That, that would can make... work. Yeah. Because I'm a sneaky bastard. <laughs> And, and thus was the, the campaign named Sneaky Bastards Incorporated. <laughs> no, the campaign was named Grandma's Cookies, because who would expect that? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going with that, then you might as well name it the Spanish Inquisition. Are we doing, how many, um, um, what are these called, uh, stunts do we take, two? Yeah, one or two. Because if you take more than that, then you have to lower your refresh. Which is bad, because I have a feeling you guys are going to need all the fate points you can get. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the other stunt that I was thinking about, which was more along the lines of the once-per-game session, um, mm -hmm. was because I have a knowledge of the dark arts, once-per-game session I can spend a fate point and call upon aid. Okay. Well, the one the one that I rewrote with the spend a fate point that actually allows you to do that more than once per game session. Okay. So that's sort of like a, a you know the idea being that you can do it more than once per game session because you're spending fate points. Right. Um, oh, hold on. How about oh, hold on one second. I, I I have I think I have a cat emergency <laughs> I have to deal with. Uh oh, lizard man. <laughs> Do you know the story about lizard men? <laughs> so we're we're playing we're playing our game one night, um, our our swords and wizardry game, and uh, <laughs> Chris is trying to describe these things. And he's like, okay, so you walk into this room, and from around the the main area, this, these this, these mm, creatures they look like giant lizards, and they come out and they make this sound. It's like a, it, it, they make this sound, and Stacy's cat goes. <laughs> I mean, it was so and, and from that point forward, all meow, meow sounds means a lizard man is nearby. Yeah. <laughs> we we had an odd fantasy world because lizard men meowed and kobolds moved furniture. Yes, they did. IKEA furniture. For, I, yeah, <laughs> IKEA <laughs> furniture. If, if it's Sometimes possible. ancient tables. Are, yeah. yeah. All because they said, I listened to the door. What do you hear? Well, it sounds like someone's I moving furniture. furniture. And lo and behold, it was always a kobold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, was like, I have another, um, is this this word? I am a sneaky fox, so I get a plus two and sneakily, when I sneakily escape from a tight situation when I'm trapped. Um, that would probably be, um, because you have to base it around one of the, the action types. 
So that would probably be uh, overcome obstacles? Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, instead of escaping from a tight situation, yeah, because overcome obstacles. Yep. Yep. Chris, would you see, um, because I don't see my character as being very stealthy, very dexterous in that way, you know, would you see clever or sneaky being more of the I manipulate this person into doing it? Yeah. I can I can entirely, uh, yeah. One or the other, I mean, both. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they both can, uh, yeah, I can see either one, really, I mean, because, you know, it's, it's like I, I mentioned in the, in the thing, you really should, um, you should see approaches as, not as, like, a character, how a character does things, but rather how a character, you know, like the name, how they approach things. Approach things, right, okay. Yeah. So, you know, your character, because he's he's a sneaky bastard, tends to approach things in a sneaky manner. Manipulative bastard. Right. Which falls under sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have uh, to just to clarify that for me? <laughs> sneaky is one of the actual things. Right, which right. I forgot right. the name of. What are those? Approaches. Approaches. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, and these things are called stunts. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have we have everyone's characters at this point. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, yep. We have a basic idea of of how you are interacting. Yep. You 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 all live in a building owned by the foxy chick. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we can um, uh, call it a night at that point, and then you know we can pick up from that uh, with the actual gaming stuff next time when uh, hopefully Jeff joins us. Cool. Speaking, awesome. yeah, Jeff is so sneaky, we don't even notice him <laughs> in our hangout. <laughs> just He's got plus eight sneaky. <laughs> plus eight. <laughs> so, um, but is there anything else that you guys think you need to cover for your characters or, or the generals? Not that I can think of. I, I think we're, <coughs> we're off to a pretty good start, right? Ethel? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just reading over it. Okay. The, All right, um, well... Oh, yes, John? One thing I had a question on, because it mentioned supernatural powers. Yes. I mean, those aren't really different from stunts, are they? Well, I mean, yeah, it, they, they are... They're slightly different. Okay. Um, it's just it because they're based... Um, yeah, I mean, they're... The, the idea of the supernatural abilities is that... Um, they are the, um, you have basically, well, you know, you have a, um, I'm trying to find where I wrote this up again. Um, it's page 12. Yeah. Um, basically, you have, like, a, a verb and then a noun and then um, the appropriate approach. So... Um, you know, um, like the, um, the, the examples that I gave in the text, I had, um, um, the, the, the character that creates fire in a flashy way. So, you know, they, uh, whenever they try to do something that, that revolves around, um, um, creating fire, they would then use their their flashy oh, approach. Okay. So, you know, like, say your character's uh, supernatural ability would be um, controls... I think what would be the appropriate noun. Um, cause the body is sound... It doesn't sound... Host bodies. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess that, you know, controls bodies in a, although the, the, the thing is I could almost, even though it's, it's 
um, what was your what did you have as the rank in forceful? Uh, in forceful, I just have plus one. Um, because I know it's low, but I could see that as being like a, a you know, your at least the possession ability would be, you know, in a forceful way. Right. Because that does, you know, you do you are kind of imposing yourself on another. So, right. so you know, your super that supernatural ability would, you know, you'd write it up as as you know, contr controls controls bodies in a in a forceful way. Right. Okay. So the I'm filling in my now like um, in the template as we talked about them, but I didn't really do that. But I'm wondering which of the um, approaches makes sense for my character because um, everything I do I do in a clever way, sort of because okay I can create fire or lightning. I can invade the dreams of others, and I can um, create illusions, right? <coughs> right. Those are my supernatural abilities. Right. In, uh, so you, what you would do is you would probably say, like, um, your character creates illusions in a... Actually, that would, probably, that would be in a sneaky way, because I do say that illusions are, you know, a sneaky... Oh, under sneaky? Yeah. yeah but what about, like, invading the dreams of others? Is that a clever thing? I would say either, yeah, clever would probably be the easiest way to um, to do that. Yeah. Now the way I create fire is not is in a more. It's not flashy. Well, no, but by its nature, making fire would be because you're drawing attention. You know, it's mm. you know if you're if you're going to make a, a burst of fire, it's not really going to. You're not going to be sneaky about setting, you know, about uh, having a, a, you know, fire suddenly burst from your fingertips. Well, from my pearl ring, actually. But. Well, yeah, but I mean, you, 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 you know what I mean. It could be from the the tip of your nose. And by the way, um, a, a comment on on the hangout, uh, David from Tuesday I got the, the sheepdog chicken hawk reference that I was trying to make. So but you never made it. <laughs> no, I started it and then just it just kind of it tapered just off couldn't, and couldn't yeah. happen, I know. Yeah, but he, but he but he got it. So, you know. It it's from the well, old bless it, him. it's it's from the old Warner Brothers cartoons. Yeah. yeah. Well I, with I a think you just got nervous like about horn. calling you got nervous about calling me a sheepdog. I think is that right. could yeah I, yeah <laughs> you invoke the wrath of Ethel by calling her a sheepdog. Well, actually, you would have been the chicken hawk in that reference, wouldn't you have? Hmm, maybe. Yeah, you remember so. what those characters were like? <sighs> no, actually, I was the sheepdog. Yeah, I was yeah. the I was protecting the. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, well, there you go. But um, anyway. So yeah, I mean that's that is probably how you would write those up. Okay, what, I didn't take very many. It, I didn't take actual points in flashy because I was thinking of the creation of soul fire is sort of a. It's kind of sneaky in a way, um, but I don't know. Let me think about that a little bit. I think you're trying to min max your character, Josh. No, no, I'm not. I'm just thinking. I, I my fire thing isn't going to be like, <gasps> and shazam, like lightning bolts come down and you know. Well, no. Attack. What the thing about I want. well? What about forceful? It could be. I, I have to. I mean, I personally, I would, I, you know, I would see it as one of those because I, I think it would, it, you would be hard pressed to make a uh, argument for sneaky fire creation. Yeah. yeah. So well, that makes sense. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, I would see it as one of those two, either flashy or forceful. Okay. <laughs> Which I guess leaves us with with Helen's character's powers, and well, the this actually she could probably, well, no, the the strength would probably would have to be forceful. What would, did you what did you did you take points in forceful or did you make uh, that your zero? Yeah, one one point for forceful. So my, my zero is flashy. Yeah. So I can I can see your you know you that you create strength in a in a forceful way as being yeah. you know what your power for um, 
eating people and getting stronger. Yeah, you definitely need to have some force in order to like yeah. tear flesh off of people, so that that makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think she gingerly, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Carefully and yeah. the best <laughs> etiquette and meticulously. Which fork do I use on um, a drug dealer? <laughs> what wine goes with hobo? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Scott. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to be like the Iron Chef of like human flesh. I don't really care how I prepare it. It just, you know. If if you even prepare it. <laughs> yeah, I. You eat raw so flesh, don't you? Pretty much. It's sushi. I prefer to call it human sushi. Okay, that works. That works. <laughs> sushi American. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Avocado on it. California rolls kind of deal? I don't know. That that might be a little too fancy for me. Okay, fair enough, fair I, I, I eat it old. I'm a little old school with my cuisine. It's, I think she's thinking more along the lines of Jack in the Box. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although he doesn't have to be in a box. I mean, preferably not. <laughs> yeah, Jack could... I could put Jack in a box. I could bring him home, you know... Just, just, as, long as, there's, just as long as there's no styrofoam, because... She is green. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, oh, yeah. Fair enough. Save the planet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, she, yeah. I mean, she wants to save the planet because she needs people around to eat. <laughs> yeah, I know. What, what am I going to do if, uh, if climate change kills everybody? That would be very bad. Don't want that. No. You can just use the intestines to make an in and out burger. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I like that. <laughs> Thank you, and I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'm over it. It's okay. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, anything else we need for tonight, then, I think? Because I think we've got, I mean, you've got your aspects, you've got your stunts, and you've got your idea of your of your supernatural abilities for your characters. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank uh, you. Next Monday or two weeks from now? Uh, two weeks from now. I'm going to stick, e even though I, I can't, I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast.